You guys know that feeling when you're sitting in your garage and you're trying to figure out how you're going to fit three engine swaps in the 12 minutes of spare time you have because, let's face it, you live in Canada and winter's coming. <coughs> and then a relative, in my case, my brother-in-law, calls you and says, hey man, I think there's something wrong with the Tiguan. I think something's leaking. And I think it may be overheating. And oh, by the way, there's not a single shop in the 20 kilometer radius that can take a look or fix the car before June 2024. All right, who wants to bet what the problem really is? Cracked water pump, because it's made out of plastic? I think so. Let's go find out. Right, manifolds off, things are very dirty, but most two liter turbos are pretty, uh, pretty messy. Let's get the water pump out of here. Clearly the water's coming out from behind here. You can see it bubbling. Um, we do have a gasket here. It's possible the gasket's gone bad, but this is all plastic housing. So let's take this off and see what's causing the coolant leaking. All right, we're almost there. We're gonna take the belt off on this side and then we're gonna take the pump off. There's the belt driving the pump there. The other side of that belt is driven by the balance shaft which runs across the front of the motor. Now I've done this a couple of times. You don't really have to take this apart to get that belt on and off. It technically has enough slack in it that you may, be able to, you may be able to slide it. There's the water pump. That's the belt. It's just gonna stay where it is and then we're gonna put it on the other pump as we put it in. So let's get this one out. It's pretty easy to actually see what's going on here. So this is where the leak was coming from. And I thought it was just a gasket thing, but I just take off the gasket here. You can see how the gasket is deformed right there. And that's because the plastic has actually broken right there. You see that? And on this side, it's actually broken as well. And in comparison, here's a new one. So you can see the wall there. I imagine this is original. So we're talking 106,000 kilometers. This plastic is clearly very brittle. So let's clean this up a little bit and we're just gonna go ahead and install the new pump. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. 
Now, one thing you can probably upgrade is this little fitting that goes between your oil cooler and the water pump. Uh, as you can tell, it's also plastic. You know, you can probably get just the O-rings themselves, but you can actually buy this little aluminum sort of upgrade that should technically last a lot longer than this plastic piece. Even if you were to get an original plastic one, as you can tell, this one's lasted 106,000 kilometers, you'll probably be fine. Watch out for the aluminum fitting there. You have two guides at the top of the pump, which will put it where it's supposed to go. Now the pump's in place, and as you noticed, I did not take off the drive pulley for the belt. Now, while it's easy to push the belt off the pulley, it's pretty hard to put it back on. If you're gonna try and do it with a screwdriver, you're probably gonna end up bending the fins. I know I've done it a bunch of times. So about the only way I figured to put the belt on without really taking everything apart, and believe me, the pulley at the bottom on the balance shaft is a pain in the butt, massive pain in the butt. You cannot get a torque wrench in there, you cannot get anything in there. Anyways, because this is driven off the balance shaft, which is driven off the crank. What I do, you get the belt started on the bottom here and then simply turn the crank. Always clockwise, so you're not going against the timing chain here. But if you turn the crank, the belt kind of positions itself up. And the moment you're in the right position, you can actually push it in all the way by hand. So there it is. So now, obviously it's crooked, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna push it in by hand and then close it up. There we go. So the belt is now in the right place. So if we turn the crankshaft, everything is in order. That's about the easiest way to do it. If you try to do it mechanically, sort of pushing the belt on, you're gonna have a very, very hard time. So hopefully that helps. Okay, yeah, the belt's on. Let's close this up. Let's attach all of the hoses. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add water to the system just to check, make sure there's no extra leaks before we start closing up the manifold. After a few minutes, no leaks, let's just close everything up. That's it for this episode, guys. Unfortunately, as soon as I started the Tiguan, it started actually failed. So I had to go ahead and replace it with a new one, which obviously made this job quite a bit longer. At the same time, I decided to upgrade the radio with an OEM, you know, big screen Bluetooth version. Unfortunately, while mounting the radio was actually very straightforward, making the Bluetooth work is a whole other story. In any case, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like what you see, click the thumbs up. If you want to see more, click subscribe. And if you have any questions about this procedure, please do not hesitate to comment below. See you guys in the next episode.